welcome to the next edition of Carrots and Cake Instagram Live. I'm wearing my Oregon hat. I do not care about sports in any way at all, except for March Madness. For some reason, I'm just into the tournament and the brackets and the whole bit. So rooting for Oregon. I'm actually going to go meet Mal to watch the Vermont game. Hopefully we can catch it somewhere on TV. Um, and Quinn did a bracket last night and he has Colgate winning the whole thing. So go Colgate. <laughs> Hope they do okay in the, the tournament. Um, so anyways, um, thank you for all the awesome questions. I actually have quite a few questions, but they're kind of short and sweet. So I just figured I'd do them all. Um, we'll see how long this goes, but they're, they're kind of short, um, product recommendations and things like that. So the first one, first question is what type of collagen do I use? Um, the second one was <laughs> What brands or styles of underwear do I wear for working out? So we could talk about my underwear. Um, requests for overnight oat recipes. I've actually got a few of those lately because I've been eating so many overnight oats this week. So I can just share a few of those with you. Um, carbs at dinner, yay or nay. I'll talk about that. Um, did I like Emotion 2.0? I will talk about that. Um, and then I guess... I'll fit it in at the end. I was like, if we'll have time, but we'll have time. I'll make it happen. What's my greatest fear and biggest regret? So I like these fun ones. So anyways, so collagen. Um, I use collagen every day in my iced coffee, overnight oats. I love it. It just, it doesn't have a ton of flavor, so I can just mix it with whatever. I'll put it in sauces, um, random baked goods, little things like that. I actually made a peanut butter fudge um, and used collagen in it. It was pretty good. Um, but I use this one, Marine Collagen Peptides from Sports Research. I get it on Amazon. And the reason I picked this one is because back in the day I did a leap sensitivities food test and it had beef as one of my highest um, sensitivities. Um, so most collagen is made out of out of beef, <laughs> collagen bones and whatnot. Um, so I just do marine. I mean, I actually didn't really notice much of a difference between doing the beef and the collagen, but I'm like, better be safe than sorry. Um, the marine's a little bit more expensive, but I don't know, get on an Amazon subscription right to my house, save a little bit of money. But yes, I use this every day, I like it. And this is the, the most, I think this is the most affordable one on there. I do, I check every once in a while to see if anything is cheaper. But for the quality, it's you know non-GMO, all the good stuff, I just figured. Um, I get this one, like I said, right to my house. All right, so let's talk about my underwear. <laughs> Not this was a funny question. I don't know why. Um, so first, um, honestly, I don't wear underwear most of the time when I work out. If I'm wearing leggings or capri pants, I just go commando. I'm just gonna get sweaty and gross. I don't see the point of wearing underwear and getting them sweaty and gross. But when I'm wearing shorts or something like that, I will wear a thong, something like that, just because there's not as much fabric in that area. Um, but the underwear that I'm liking lately are these Tommy John ones. Um, Mal actually bought them for me um, because I had bought him some stuff, but it's a really good quality product. They're kind of expensive, but they're super soft. Um, they move with you as you're working out. Um, just really like them. Brooks running had amazing underwear back in the day, but they don't make it anymore. We should get like a petition to have them bring it back. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my favorite ones right now. Um, overnight oat recipes. Yes, so if you go to Carrots and Cake, there's a ton. There's actually a breakfast section where some of my favorite ones are. Um, if you're on right now catching this in 24 hours, um, I posted my like basic overnight oats recipe on stories, so you can grab that there. Um, and if you're watching this on Carrots and Cake, I'll put it down in the show notes. <laughs> But I kind of do like the same thing over and over again, but I'll add, you know, banana. I added like a carrot puree the other day. Um, I'll add like applesauce. It's kind of like whatever I have around the house and what I'm in the mood for, but I really do kind of have like a basic recipe that I go to and it's oats, it's um, hemp seeds, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds. I'm still into the seed cycle in a sense. I'm not super strict, but um, I'm still doing seeds a little bit, ground flax, obviously. And then uh, I put a bunch of peanut butter in at the end, in the next morning. Um, and overnight oats, you can obviously eat them cold, but sometimes I'll heat them up in the morning in the microwave. So just depends on my mood in the morning. Um, carbs for dinner, yay or nay? So yay, of course. If you want carbs for dinner, eat carbs for dinner. 
<laughs> like I'm not super restrictive. I mean, I had, you know, mac and cheese the other night. It was Bamba mac and cheese, but still I had a ton of carbs in it and it was delicious. Um, so as far as, so actually, oh, sorry, sorry, a comment. Um, do I wear thongs? Yes, yes, I wear thongs if I'm wearing um, shorts to work out or if I'm just wearing pants, <laughs> jeans. Um, but anyway, sorry, I just saw that question come in. So uh, the carb thing, so back to that. So I actually read this book called What to Eat When, and I really liked it. I actually have like a book report coming to Carrots and Cake soon. Um, but the author is a huge proponent of breakfast, and he thinks, you know, your cortisone levels are the highest in the morning, so supposedly your body can handle carbs first thing in the morning better than throughout the day. So his whole thing is like loading up your breakfast with carbs and protein, and then throughout the day kind of like, um, trickling off as far as your, you know, carb sources goes. And he also says to eat three quarters of your meal, three quarters of your calories before dinner time. So I thought that was interesting too, just front loading your days with calories and things like that. I mean, it kind of makes sense because you're moving around, you're so busy during the day. Um, and then by evening, you don't make, you don't need as much fuel and energy. So at night, maybe your carb situation would be a little bit lower. Um, and yeah, personally, I pretty much stick to, you know, protein and salad greens, veggies, things like that. But I don't do like no carb or low carb. I mean, I had carrots last night, I had sweet potatoes. Um, but I do kind of trail off on the carb sources, I guess. Like in the morning, I've been really into oatmeal. Lunch is usually veggies, protein, salad, a wrap, something like that. And then dinner um, is kind of similar. But yeah, I'm not, not loading up on the carbs at night. But I think it just depends on your eating habits, what works for you. And I don't think it needs to be an all or none. Like I said, I had, you know, bands of mac and cheese the other night and I don't know what the carbs were, but I mean, they were obviously pretty high and it was delicious. And that was just one night out of the week. And um, I think we're gonna do some sort of salmon thing salad tonight. So I mean, tonight will be lower carb, but eh, sorry, it's not a straight answer, but I really do think it depends on the individual. And that book was really interesting if you wanted to check it out. It's called um, What to Eat When. And like I said, there is hopefully a blog post coming soon. Get my act together on that. Um, and then did I like Emotion 2.0? So that was on Amazon Prime, I believe. A reader told me about it. And it was a documentary all about just your brain, your mind, and how it connects to your body, emotions, um, health, relationships, a whole bit. It was super interesting. I really liked it. Um, the other one I like really liked was a documentary called Heal on Netflix. And that, I mean, that got me. I mean, there was some stuff there that like really just, um, I don't know, hit some, hit some buttons. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right word, but I just could relate to so much of it and just having a chronic disease and maybe not managing my emotions and stress and anxiety and some of the crap from, you know, growing up childhood. Like we all have that stuff. Um, but that really hit home. So, I mean, if you're somebody who struggles with, um, autoimmune diseases, chronic diseases, um, just healing on any level, that was, that was really good. If I reckon, if I could, Pick one, I would go heel first and then emotion 2.0 as second, um, as far as which one to watch when. But yeah, both were good. Um, and then my greatest fear, biggest regret. So I was kind of thinking about this before, you know, I started and I was, oh, uh, so I feel like we're gonna get dark for a second and then I'll bring it out. <laughs> bring it back to uh, mostly happy carrots and cake stuff. So my biggest fear is really just anybody close to me getting sick. Um, we actually went through something um, a few years ago. Um, somebody close to us um, got a very aggressive cancer um, and had a tough battle and passed away. And see, I can barely talk about it now, but um, just somebody so good leaving their losing their life too early, it just like gets to me. So if like something happened to Mal or Quinn or my sister or my mom or just somebody close to me, I think I would just have a really hard time with that, especially if they were battling something like that. Um, it just, it's so hard when somebody so good, um, loses a battle like that. So I'm done. I'm not going to keep talking about that because it makes me sad, but, um, my biggest regret, and this is easy. And I've actually talked about this other places too, is not becoming a registered dietitian or going to dietitian or a nutrition school and doing the whole bit. Um, because I've come back to this again and again, I would say probably 
every six months <laughs> I think about going back to school and doing the whole dietitian thing. And then I just realized it's such a long road, such an investment, like time, money wise. And now they have the new requirement in 2020, 2022. Whatever the new requirement is that you need a master's degree. So I'm like, oh boy, so now I have to do all the prerequisites, get the nutrition degree, do the internship, take the test, and then get a master's degree. I was just like, oh man, I'm gonna be in school forever and you know, out, you know, hundred thousand dollars or something like that when it's all said and done. So that's definitely my biggest regret. It just it's something I just didn't realize it was even a job um, until I was like out of college. I was like, oh. Oh, people can do that. Um, and it wasn't an option where I went to undergrad. So, I mean, it just was not on my radar till much later in life. And it's funny because when I worked at Harvard, um, Simmons was right down the street um, and they have this great nutrition program. And I actually met with somebody, talked about all the requirements and thought about doing it then. And I remember thinking back, I wasn't going to be done till like 2009 or something like that. And like looking back 2009, I would have been completely done in a dietitian. So definitely kicking myself for not making that happen back then and I don't know I still joke with Mal I'm like when we're retired I'm gonna go back to school and make it happen <laughs> so I'm just trucking along you know doing my thing and I hired a couple super smart dietitians and now I just consult them when I don't know what to say or you know a question or client um, challenges out of my scope so eh, I'll just hire all the dietitians <laughs> Anyways, that's the end of this Instagram live. I hope you guys liked it. It was it was short and sweet, but we covered a lot, right? So that's good. Um, anyways, keep the questions coming, and I hope you have a lovely day.